The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Now, the author of The Path of Least Resistance and The Tech Insider, David White. And welcome to a beautiful Wednesday, August the 29th. Uh, it is a gorgeous but windy day in Clearwater, Florida, the headquarters of Technical Trading and Investing, TFNN.com. Um, today we celebrate the uh, world according to Hoyle. Of course, uh, on this day in 1769, uh, Edmund Hoyle assumed room temperature. Uh, and uh, no longer wrote uh, rules to famous games like whist, quadrille, picket. Oh, aren't those wonderful games? Oh, but and he wrote for chess and backgammon. Uh, but uh, up until that point, no one had ever really written the uh, uh, rules down to a lot of the games. And of course, according to Hoyle, uh, it became a fav uh, famous expression about how people uh, talk about a authority. Uh, and the definitive authority on anything. Of course, uh, the book now has a, the uh, standardized rules for over 200 games in it. Uh, but uh, long, you know, I guess uh, you really don't think about it, but uh, as short as a few hundred years ago, uh, no one even had the rules written down. I guess that's why uh, people kept on trying to tell me that uh, on a full moon, uh, all twos were wild. Eh, this doesn't seem to work that way. But uh, it's still a decent book and in uh, printings out there. Uh, Isaac, uh, yeah, kind of a uh, non-event uh, non uh, now, at least for uh, uh, the greater um, oil wells out in the Gulf. Uh, we saw uh, crude come off about a buck earlier. I didn't have a chance to look at it the last few minutes, but it uh, uh, seemed to be back in the $95 range. Uh, looks like uh, gasoline will continue up with those refineries closed and with nowhere to p push oil uh, and crude probably uh, down a little bit in the very short term. Uh, of course, uh, Venezuela uh, refinery uh, having a fire means that some of that uh, 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 some of that gasoline from the Gulf is going to find its way back down to Venezuela uh, and put a, a continuing pressure on it. Uh, some people are saying, "Well, we're about 375 here a gallon in uh, uh, in the Clearwater Tampa area." Uh, but uh, I don't know how much of that is uh, just coming up to the 4th of July. Uh, lots of visitors in town that they can gouge. And uh, eh, what else going on? Just, you know, just all that. But I suspect that uh, we'll probably uh, see probably four, four and a quarter before uh, this whole cycle is over. Uh, and uh, probably not good news for any incumbents. I suspect that there will be a lot of ire uh, for those people with high, high gas prices. Uh, but uh, at least Isaac will not be uh, uh, shamed like uh, Katrina. Uh, Katrina, in the way, is always like that band. And, of course, uh, stuck with uh, Hurricane Katrina, uh, kind of a blot. At least Isaac will still be my favorite bartender uh, on the love boat. Uh, the big guns are out from Google. If you uh, looked at Google today, uh, you will notice that there's a little something that they've never put on their web page before. Ha ha ha, the Nexus 7, an added on their web page. It's always been super simple. Uh, sometimes it's been special for things like the Olympics, other special events. They've had little doodles on there. Uh, this is the first ad anybody has ever known about on Google, and maybe it will start a fad. Uh, they are pushing the 8-gigabyte uh, 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 Nexus 7 tablet for uh, just a hair under 200 bucks and uh, $250 for the 16 gigabyte version. Uh, but uh, I have a feeling they'll be able to push a lot of that product uh, if that's the only thing they push on the Google search engine website. Uh, but uh, looking, uh, what was it? Was Steve uh, Wood, uh, Steve Rhodes uh, asked me a uh, I don't know probably six eight weeks ago. Uh, what I thought the strongest uh, company would be out of uh, Apple, Google, and Microsoft over the next few years, not just 
between now and Christmas. And I said, I thought uh, Google was actually getting its uh, act together on several fronts. And uh, just the if you can imagine them starting to really make money off the App Store like Apple did, um, I think that they've got the, the ability to actually uh, make a lot of money on what they're doing now that they have not been able to. Uh, a lot easier than Facebook and other companies out here. Uh, we had a lot of earnings today. Some of them are out already. Uh, Joy Global, Brown Foreman, TiVo, Pandoria, uh, Vera Bradley, Castilla Waste, Fresh Market, and H.G. Hines. Uh, tomorrow, Sienna and Splunk uh, are out. Um, kind of an uh, interesting uh, suit going on now in New York. Uh, this is the second time I've reported on this. Uh, Twitter has one of the few uh, companies that actually says uh, you own what you tweet. Uh, and the court is saying, no, Twitter does. Uh, it is in all the documents and signed documents uh, that you sign up for, terms of agreement, all that stuff on their site. Uh, but uh, the New York Supreme Court's saying no. Uh, it's the second time this is, uh, has been filed as a motion in this case. Uh, my guess is this is going to the Supreme Court. Uh, eventually, I think the New York Supreme Court will lose. Uh, the reason that they want to uh, make this a uh, priority, at least in New York, uh, is a easy way to go back and get anything anybody has ever tweeted. Uh, they are saying because uh, some other people can see it, it's public. And if you know anything about Twitter, uh, we have a Twitter account uh, linked to a lot of our, email, or our uh, newsletters here at TFNN. Uh, it is uh, by invitation only if you're getting our newsletters. Uh, the same thing was uh, kind of a for invitation thing. And this one actually was a protest. They want to get a hold of uh, uh, tweets uh, during, uh, I think, one of the Occupy uh, Wall Street issues. But uh, the question is, who owns what? Uh, most everybody says that they own it all. Twitter is one of the few companies says we don't own it at all. Uh, but uh, they don't want to get involved in every little, uh, uh, how can I say, it? A brouhaha with the courts over what someone said. Uh, when uh, you delete something on Twitter, it's not like uh, a lot of the other sites. It's truly gone. They do not save it. Uh, they don't want to save it, and they've uh, told the... Uh, uh, basically the government to pan, uh, pound salt on it until you actually force us with some kind of law we're not going to uh, keep it. Uh, if you send anything with uh, Gmail or uh, Smarter Mail or any of the other uh, big mail uh, free mail systems, uh, Gmail and uh, Microsoft Mail uh, those every one of those is actually scanned and your data becomes part of some database um, that uh, of course the government can take a look at uh, if they want, because all they have to do is get uh, uh, Gmail or any of those companies to roll over. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to come out uh, who owns what, uh, but I suspect it's headed to the Supreme Court. Uh, gold calls right now. Uh, I didn't look at uh, GLD later today to see if we've got anything. Uh, but uh, what do we got? Eh, it's off about 62 cents. Um, I suspect that gold, at least for the short term, uh, is at a uh, high. It looks like uh, know, probably 1675 is uh, more the top end of the trading range in 1550, 1525 probably the lower part of that range. Uh, one of the reasons I think maybe we've hit at least a short-term uh, high here is that the gold calls are at 2,000 highs. Everybody and their dog has gold, uh, gold calls super long, and normally the big money is on the opposite side, uh, as it was in 2008 when the uh, uh, market turned for gold uh, then. Uh, the ratio of outstanding calls uh, was a, about uh, 2.69 to 1 on August 24th, and uh, actually a few days earlier than that uh, reached 2.76. So uh, everybody is so tremendously bullish on gold going up and buying calls on it uh, that uh, probably at least had a short-term high uh, euphoria being fairly big out there in gold. Uh, Allegra, gold bond, and icy hot, all the wonderful... Uh, uh, medications for the elderly set, uh, but also the company that builds them or, and makes them uh, is knee-deep in SEC allegations. Uh, apparently one of the uh, uh, 
uh, board of directors of Chatham Incorporated uh, leaked to his uh, uh, accountant and then that accountant uh, told up to seven others uh, about uh, something happening. I think the stock went from about 20 to 24 bucks one day on some insider information. Uh, but uh, the kind of the funny thing is, is they're saying that these seven insiders made about $500,000. Uh, their agreement uh, on this only gets back about 150000 So uh, well, probably attorneys probably ate into that somewhat, but still sounds to me like they're 350000 Ahead. Anyway, uh, we've got uh, John from Philly today. How are you doing today? Hey, David. Uh, thanks for taking the call, sir. Okay. Uh, David, you piqued my interest with your um, description of gold option data. Can you uh, uh, first uh, answer the question, where are you getting uh, or where is this data sourced, please? Uh, it, it comes from uh, the uh, Board of Trade in Chicago. And I know you don't, you know, I've never heard you mention lopsided uh, call and or put activity in the past as it applies to, you know, either bonds or the S&Ps or what have you. I'm just wondering how that data jumped out at you here today. Uh, I saw some uh, articles probably for the last week from Bloomberg. They're all, po all pointing it out every once in a while. You know, when it gets super extreme, normally yeah. those are pretty good. If it's just kind of uh, a little more, a little less, we'll say it's like one and a half times puts or calls, it, probably not a whole lot into it. A lot of times options are just that. They are an insurance on positions. When, sure, they, get, when they get really extreme, uh, normally someone will call it out. I saw it in some Bloomberg um, things, and I'll, I saw the article this morning and again. In fact, I was going to bring it up earlier in the month and uh, didn't, but uh, it's still very, very bullish on options, which is normally this the counterfactual uh, on that. Normally, that means that you've probably, you know, I'm not saying the thing's going to 1200 bucks. I'm just saying that maybe these calls will sit at, maybe the thing will sit at 1675 until these things uh, run out of gas. But uh, uh, certainly it looks like for the next 60 days, everybody is extremely bullish. I suspect that they are because of uh, Greenspan's helicopter and money. Uh, but we'll have to actually see how that plays out on Friday at 10 o'clock. But David, I, uh, I appreciate you elaborating on that detail. Uh, I might share with you and your listeners uh, just uh, two bits of data that I have regarding the gold market myself. Okay. Um, first, uh, I rely and use um, uh, analytical work from people I respect uh, as I've gathered, you know, resources over the years, you know, including people such as yourself. So most of my work is not original work, and so I'll, I'll leave it to the... Uh, We're going to go to break here in just a minute. If you'd like to hold through the break, uh, we'd like you to, John. Anyway, we'll be back in just a minute after this timeout. We'll be looking at more stocks and uh, maybe hearing from John what he's looking at. Be back in just a minute. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Price Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These new Newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Case Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus can Contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of the Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And if you're there, uh, we're on the phone with uh, John from Philly talking a little bit about gold. Uh, but uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up, uh, I've seen this on the actual options uh, uh, but uh, here's the article. Uh, the ratio of outstanding calls to, uh, uh, to buy the SP uh, Spiders Gold Trust versus puts to sell jumped to 2.69 to 1 on August 24th and reached 2.76 earlier this month, the highest level since October 2008. According to data compiled by Bloomberg, the exchange uh, traded fund has re uh, risen 3.7% this year uh, to $161.64 admit. Uh, Amid increased demand for the metal, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but uh, the, my understanding, I've seen two articles from Bloomberg also about, the, uh, about gold itself. Uh, but uh, that's, uh, that's the article. Anyway, uh, John, you're still there? I am, David, yes. Okay. And uh, thanks so much for reviewing that, that, uh, that answered that question. Uh, let me just uh, add the uh, other bits of data that I can contribute just to that topic one of the Namely, um, two months ago, uh, two people that I admire greatly of years both, who just do timing work, who happen to have a system or a technique uh, uh, which they use to identify future turnouts. Well, you're starting to uh, drop out here, John. Do you, can you turn around with that cell phone or 
Sure. Okay. Maybe you'll find a better spot. You were good in the little first segment there. Okay, very good. Hopefully that sounds, this is better for you. Yeah, that sounds better. Terrific. Anyway, uh, both, uh, both people had identified Labor Day, plus or minus four or five days, as being a turning point in gold. And um, it had been my view three or four weeks ago that if gold strongly trended into this time frame, that I'd be looking to go opposite. And frankly, as a longer-term gold bull, I was actually hoping for a, uh, a three-week decline, which, of course, didn't happen. We've had a three-week rally. So I just wanted to point to you, uh, I would not be surprised if gold, in fact, turned right in this time frame. And uh, so we'll just go from there and uh, see what happens. There's a pretty high correlation, I brought it up on the show before, between turning at major three-day weekends over the summer and also right after, of course, uh, Thanksgiving, Black Friday. Um, and a pretty good correlation. I've gone back uh, a number of years on all that. Uh, the one thing I dislike about when I look at GLD, just the uh, actual ETF itself, um, if you're watching a, a, on uh, Tiger TV or uh, in the den, um, I have my power law vector indicator that basically puts time, uh, price change, and uh, uh, volume together as one number. Uh, to kind of the same thing uh, as uh, charging for electricity. And uh, it's, it's kind of a logarithmic scale, uh, but, uh, you know, I've got about uh, a 4.9 on the downside uh, where we went down to 100, and, what it was, 148 or so. Uh, but as we come back up, uh, it started a little higher, uh, but this last big run back from $150.85 on July 12th to come up here uh, has been, even though we've had a few days up here at the highs, with volume, uh, most of that, or a lot of that move would, did not have a lot of uh, volume in it. So, uh, uh, you know, the, you did have a nice big high volume day, uh, but it did not break that uh, previous high at 160, what is that, 163.20 uh, on April 12th. Uh, they had uh, 9.2 million shares. It got kind of close to it with 17 million uh, at uh, one, uh, 162.45. Uh, so we still have a test come here coming. Uh, you had a lot of volume in it. Kind of funny that it pulled right back. Now, I don't like to see volume just at those highs. I like to see volume at least start to come in somewhere midways. And it, it was kind of tepid until, uh, what, uh, uh, the 21st and the 22nd and the uh, 23rd. And for everything I can tell, uh, everybody has pretty much decided to give up on only a lot of gold itself and uh, just using the ETF as the quick way of getting in and out of gold. David, uh, I appreciate your thoughts. Uh, that discussion for me has been real helpful. So uh, thanks a bunch, man. Okay, thanks. We'll get back to uh, what we have uh, going on here. Uh, anyway, uh, Yelp, uh, one of the few companies out here uh, that has actually popped uh, on uh uh, option or not option rollover, but on uh, the uh, lockup period for uh, the uh, uh, new IPO, uh, it's up about 19 percent today, uh, up about three dollars and fifty cents. Uh, we'll get back to this on the opposite side, uh, but uh, Yelp bucking the trend. I think I know why. We'll talk about it when we come back. Tom O'Brien's daily trading newsletter, Market Insights, has delivered powerful results for subscribers, and now is the perfect time to try it out for two weeks absolutely free. We're so confident in the value Tom provides his subscribers in his daily newsletter that through Labor Day weekend only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system, completely free of charge. We'll even cover the shipping cost. Cancel at any time during your two-week free 
free trial to Market Insights and pay nothing and keep Tom's free book as a gift from us. This offer is only valid for new subscribers. We've only extended this offer once before, and it will only be active for a short period of two weeks. So act now to take advantage of this great offer and be ready to capitalize on a more active, more volatile market once traders return from their August vacations. All the details are on the front page of TFNN.com. Sign up for your free trial to get your free copy of Tom's best-selling book today. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Treve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Treve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan for Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, it seems like we don't go through a, a day anymore without talking about these IPOs and lockup periods. And uh, when we look at uh, stocks, uh, in fact, I haven't even chased, checked uh, Facebook in a number of days. This seems like one of those stocks that... Uh, uh, continues to uh, uh, be something that uh, a lot of people are not uh, too invested in. Uh, this thing has pretty much gone sideways, and I suspect it will, um, and we'll get to Yelp in just a second, what the difference is. Uh, the big problem, or the big thing with Facebook is you have uh, about three guys, uh, or three companies that own 90% of it, uh, that uh, came out, and of course, October, November is the free for all uh, when a lot of employees, small holders, are going to be uh, trying to get out of Facebook, and there will be a billion shares uh, uh, available. Uh, it's uh, much tougher than having three people get together and say, you know, we're going to do this thing right. Uh, they're going to be able to keep this thing probably going sideways for a while, uh, but uh, when all those extra uh, call, uh, 
holders come on in uh, October, November time frame, uh, they're going to be scared. They're going to be looking at 20 bucks and thinking it probably sounds pretty sweet. Uh, I suspect that's where we're going to see the second big leg down in Facebook right now. Uh, probably a lot of uh, uh, the big holders in there are doing exactly uh, what they would do every day, and that is uh, buy, buy, buy in the morning, prop up the stock, sell the rest of the day uh, slowly, but fire effect when they buy and then sell. You know, if they can sell, you know, 20% more than they buy every day um, in, you know, 45 days, they can get a lot uh, out of those uh, 245 million or 254 million, can't remember the exact number, of shares that they need to get out of if they wish to. Uh, Yelp, a little bit uh, different thing, uh, not quite the uh, disaster of uh, Facebook epic size, if I can actually type, W-E-L-P, E-L-P. Uh, Yelp is, of course, uh, uh, a lot of people were getting short this stock uh, well in advance. Uh, you know, it's been in a bigger trading range. Of course, uh, a lot of people are still back in this thing uh, right around uh, the level that they got into it. Uh, a lot of insiders still own this thing much lower. Uh, not a lot of people worrying about this like Facebook, uh, one side of it. And two, uh, Facebook, uh, everybody started thinking, hey, we need to short every one of these um, IPOs, and uh, it doesn't matter how bad a company is, at one point it's fairly easy to launch a short squeeze, and uh, a short squeeze, squeeze is just this. Uh, everybody was uh, short, uh, let's say that you're a big holder of Yelp, and you want to really fire everybody up, what do you do? Uh, over probably the last few days, maybe even five, six days, you short a bunch, and then buy them all back at once. I call it firing for effect. Uh, it is a way to manipulate the marketplace, especially if you have a huge short interest in the stock already. Uh, you can get your own short interest on it if you don't want to be any deeper in it. You buy them all back in the morning, get the thing going, uh, pretty soon you have a nice little short squeeze. Short squeezes are like this. Big candles, huge volume, they tend to burn themselves out fairly well. Uh, was there any big news that really moved Yelp? No. Uh, but uh, there's any of these uh, folks out there that uh, uh, are big into these IPOs, a lot of them are owned by very sharp people with uh, uh, big street names out there. And uh, I'm trying to remember this, I thought this was Merrill, but uh, I'll have to go back and check. Uh, but you have to be very worried about these kind of folks uh, because they can uh, light it up for one day. We saw the same thing in another one, uh, Yelp. I'm not so sold on the whole idea of how Yelp works, uh, mostly because I'm waiting for the lawsuits to fly. Uh, basically, you can go back in and give an opinion, uh, and very few people uh, write on Yelp to give great opinions of restaurants, but a lot of people uh, voice their displeasure. Uh, it's probably ten times the people would rather slam somebody than say that they were great. Uh, and a lot of these uh, people haven't even gone to the restaurants. They either hate somebody that's working there or, you know, some other reason. But uh, it's kind of a way to uh, uh, female dog. Uh, yeah, I think that's the easiest way to say about it about uh, uh, some of the service you did or did not like. Sometimes it's, uh, it's uh, actually useful. But uh, every time I've checked on it, everybody hated everything. And, uh, of course, that doesn't do you any good. Some people got to like some stuff. But, uh, I suspect that that's part of human nature, which is probably the biggest problem with Yelp. How many people are going to get on something and say it really worked? How many of those people that say it's great are employees that are told to go home and say it was great? And how many people uh, you know, took some kind of uh, uh, offense to where there was probably none actually given but, uh, you know, just uh, people, a lot of people just love to be offended these days. Anyway, uh, Yelp, I'm not exactly sure how well you can turn this thing into a moneymaker, although it's much better than a lot of the other ones out there. Uh, but uh, don't be surprised if we see a few of these things uh, light off uh, and, uh, you know, try to get uh, the opposite side of this going. Uh, the reason I bring this big day up here in this context, uh, Groupon, G-R-P-N, Groupon. PRP, and I think it is, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, is a huge move. And remember, 
uh, just what a monster move that Groupon had uh, into earnings and a turnaround, uh, these stocks do tend to get super high short interest, and you have to watch them. Uh, in the case of Groupon, if we go back and look just not too long ago, on May 11th, this thing was six dollars. Uh, uh, nine dollars and sixty three cents uh, this thing blew out with monster volume over two days and went up over fifty percent uh... and ran every stop that there was on the short positions on groupon um, at this point if i saw something like this in yelp uh, if we could see some kind of monstrous open tomorrow uh... and have this thing kind of come out i would say you might be looking at the same kind of pattern out here uh, that you could get back into. But uh, uh, Groupon, probably the archetype on this. Yelp, not near the horrible company that Groupon or uh, probably the non-grower uh, uh, that Facebook is. Uh, but uh, you might have a nice play out there, a little smaller. Might not see 50% in uh, a couple of days. But uh, Groupon finally or f uh, did find all those people on the wrong side of the market for one day. Uh, but the path of least resistance did not change. Uh, this company was going down. And uh, if you could get shares to short, which you couldn't, or at least I couldn't from uh, the two brokers I go with, uh, neither one of them that day could actually short uh, Groupon. Uh, normally, uh, when that's true, uh, the big guys are paying a premium for it. So it got to $14.93. They may have to uh, uh, say that uh, they were willing to pay a uh, uh, 5 or 10% premium to the price of the stock to actually get those shares short up front. A lot of these things are so heavily shorted you can't get a hold of them at all. Uh, but uh, just a few things to look at here. Uh, let's see if we've got back, uh, go back. Was I done with my presentation for today? I can't remember. I think, yeah, we we're on that. Uh, so we're going to look at a few other stocks. You can give me a call just like John did. And uh, thanks for the call, John, at 877-927-6648. That's 877-927-6648. I'll probably see if I, eh, I probably won't have time. Uh, before uh, Friday, uh, but uh, I do uh, look at uh, change dates over three-day weekends. Uh, they've been a good, uh, if at least not the direction, the character of the markets do tend to change. I would suspect that uh, although uh, some of the economic indicators have gone up, uh, what we have noticed is that the consumer conference, uh, confidence has started to fall. Um, it, Especially in the market, uh, there's the psychology of uh, things are either good getting better or bad getting worse. Uh, and mostly that's been led by the consumer, at least in the United States. Um, when we see uh, huge lows in China, like we saw today, uh, when they, I think they made another, what, uh, big low back from 2008, uh, and see their stock market really, really hammered. Um, I think uh, probably a good indication that, uh, you know, if those guys get a cold, we're probably gonna, at least going to get a sniffle out of it. And uh, kind of hard to see. But I think that may, uh, we're probably leading into uh, the uh, uh, Jackson Hole speech, which uh, is at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Friday. I sp suspect uh, we're probably going to get the minutes of that speech, or at least the text of that speech, somewhere uh, five to ten minutes before that, so uh, probably going to be watching it around 9:45 uh, to 9:50. I suspect that that move is going to be short-lived, and we're probably going to see some kind of bounce out of uh, the market when we come back on Tuesday. Of course, we'll be closed on Monday here at TFN. Uh, but we should see something interesting out of that. Uh, a lot of these stocks uh, continue. Uh, we talked about Amazon the other day. I want to be watching this fairly closely seeing yet another higher day. I'm not exactly sure when it's going to happen, uh, but uh, Amazon is hiring another 600 uh, people for its cloud uh, and computing. Uh, and uh, those people are probably going to come on in the next quarter. Uh, it's going to probably make their earnings look uh, a little weak um, because uh, mostly what Amazon has uh, is a cadre of very low Price people that put stuff in box boxes. Uh, when they're hiring 600 people for the cloud services, none of these people are going to be hourly workers. Uh, I think it's great for Amazon in the long run, especially trying to get away from uh, the one-legged stool of just selling products uh, and shipping them via UPS or FedEx. Uh, but at the same time, um, 
kind of a weakness, uh, especially mar uh, margins uh, against uh, uh, CapEx and some of the other stuff that they're going to have to spend, uh, may put some temporary uh, weakness in the stock. I mean, we've already seen that happen before. Uh, and uh, they kind of talked it down at these highs before, and I suspect we might see that in the next earning uh, releases that we see in Amazon also. Uh, but uh, we continue to see, you know, the super high, which is at 244 uh, on uh, September 19th of 2011, 8.2 million shares. Uh, we're seeing these just very, very light volume days going in, uh, and uh, normally you look at the market. Uh, changing, especially on uh, the end of summer, if it was going up on light volume, uh, you want to think that it's probably going to turn and head back down. If it's going down on light volume, uh, probably looking for that market to turn and head up after uh, the three-day weekend. Uh, and uh, normally you get a nice little uh, trend started uh, first week or so, first 14 days of September, and that normally that trend will carry through uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, and, uh, you know, normally your Black Friday numbers uh, change the mood of the market, but uh, normally fairly decent. Uh, but uh, when we look at uh, Amazon, especially as we get close and above those uh, $244 highs, uh, we've had uh, 4 million, eh, 3.7 million shares, uh, 3 million shares, 2.7 million shares, 1.1 million shares uh, so far. Uh, is that right today? Yeah, so very, very light volume. Uh, of course, we're probably seeing that in the entire market. Uh, I haven't really talked about the broad market because it hasn't moved much. I'll update it here, but uh, you know we're up uh, at uh, three and a half points on the S&P cash, uh, 1.8 billion shares with uh, 10 million to go. So we're probably talking about 2.4. A billion shares on the consolidated New York Stock Exchange tape. Uh, I bring this up occasionally for my new listeners. The volume numbers I give for the NYSE include all the EF, uh, ECNs, uh, all the shares of the stocks traded on that. Uh, I think a lot of times people tune in and listen to Tom. He's talking about just the floor traded stocks. Is there a big difference? Uh, it's a large enough sample size than, uh, that statistically it shouldn't be. Uh, the one thing you do want to make sure is that you are comparing apples to apples. So if you're looking at just the floor traded uh, shares at the New York Stock Exchange or uh, the uh, completely traded shares of the consolidated tape that you are doing apples to apples, not apples to oranges. Um, we continue. I continue to think we're going to see uh, some movement down in the VIX. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of spike, maybe uh, Tuesday or Wednesday next week, uh, on very light volume. See this VIX, VIX pullback. Uh, it's a little elevated because of the vacation d uh, day on Monday. Uh, we're probably going to see this thing pop down on Tuesday, which would make people kind of. You know, even if market's down, you're probably going to see this thing actually uh, are up a little bit. You're probably going to see the VIX move down. It drives a lot of people nuts when they don't know that some of those days that they are looking at uh, get subtracted uh, because uh, the VIX is based on the next 30 calendar days, not the th next 30 trading days. Uh, and there's always a little uh, contagion, uh, especially when you have a lot of uh, vacation days. And I think there's uh, two, I'll have to go back and look at them. There's uh, several coming in the uh, next uh, uh, in the fall segment. Sometimes that actually gets turned around. Um, we've got just a few seconds here left. I wanted to go back and look at the cues uh, and uh, see what we have in those. Another one that's uh, up here on lighter volumes. Of course, the ETFs I think uh, give a little bit better picture uh, than a lot. And we'll be back in just a second clear these out, but uh, QQQs, uh, we have made it up to the previous highs. Uh, volumes about 20% light. Uh, we've got a couple of nice gaps down below uh, that aren't on monstrous volume. So uh, we'll take a look at this and give it a little colonoscopy uh, before we leave in the next segment. We're going deep, deep. 
Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND-dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Time is the great equalizer of all mankind. Time doesn't care about winners or losers, who succeeds or fails. Time only cares that you played the game. Question, are you playing the money game? Is your money working as hard for you as you are for it? I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, a daily trading and investment newsletter service, and we're celebrating our one-year anniversary. In year one, we generated a 30% profit. Plus, I provided 26 hours of live coaching to my clients. My daily newsletter service is available by 8 a.m. each day and covers the stock, futures, currency, and commodity markets, along with all the current patterns that you can trade. Each newsletter is packed with education, and it's yours for as little as $3 per day. And for the next 30 days, you can try it risk-free. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and begin your journey to great wealth today. If you're waiting for a better tomorrow, remember this. Today's tomorrow will soon be yesterday, and your clock is ticking. Mastering Probability. Now is your time. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. As we come back, we have a caller, and it is Mohammed in California. How are you doing today, Mohammed? Good. How are you doing, David? Uh, it's a gorgeous day out there. I'm glad I've got real hair, because if I didn't, it would be down the street. We're at the very end of the, uh, of the hurricane, and the wind is whipping. And it is real, folks, and it is brown, and I don't color it. So there. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what are we doing here uh, with Priceline? Yeah, I'm just, I was just thinking about shorting it. You know, uh, I, I was talking to Tom before it took a, the big hammer down on here. Uh, I think this thing's probably in a trading range. 
Unfortunately, I think you need to get back up to probably in the 650 range to short the thing. Um, I don't think it's making an ABC down, uh, but uh, you know, could it get back down to, you know, it's at 600. Could you get back down to uh, 553 or so? Yeah, I just don't see. You know, I'd like to see a lot of better risk reward. Uh, and it's starting to get into this huge gap down. But I'd almost like this thing at least to fill 50% of that gap, if not more, back on the other side. Um, they've got William Shatner. I don't know if you've seen the new ads uh, are running on it again. Uh, just before this thing got hammered down, I was talking to Tom about it, I think on the show, uh, or one of the shows. And uh, the one thing that I'd noticed is that... Uh, they were having a lot of problems. Um, they don't make any money on selling airline flights. It's almost all hotels. And they were having a lot of problems uh, actually selling hotel rooms in Europe and getting any deals on them at all. And even here in the United States, the crop of deals uh, that they were getting uh, was uh, dwindling. Uh, the occupancy rates are higher. Uh, and getting higher, and they've and the hotels have tended to to right size their hotels, uh, and uh, it's uh, a lot tougher for you to actually get a deal off a price line. Uh, not extremely tough, but tough. And uh, some people think also that the uh, that your you know the name your own price thing. They've now kind of done a thing like Kayak, which is uh, you can also get a decent price off their website. Also, uh, is kind of confused their brand. Uh, what are you thinking on this? Um, you know, I, I, you know, I kind of have to agree with you. Um, but, you know, that's interesting, you know, the addition of William Shatner, you know, brought the stock back up. Yeah, the, uh, his ad started but, again Thursday last week. So right, I, right. I, I think that, you know, he pretty much had the whole summer off uh, when, after he went off the bridge in that school bus and saved all the, the nuns and the, and the kids and everything. <laughs> I don't know what the whole thing was, but he looks a lot thinner. I suspect maybe he had to go do some medical stuff, and he kind of like cut out for the summer, but he is back. Uh, and, I mean, I think that's uh, it's one of those things that seems to, you know, the more you repeat advertising, the better it works. Uh, I suspect that, that no matter how well it works, they're going to have problems. Uh, but, I, you know, the problem is you need to get this thing, I think, I would love to see it back at around about 650 and go back up there on light volume and fill at least most of that gap. It could fail at any time but you know, with the market. But if this thing could have a nice couple of days uh, and get back up there on lighter volume, you know, that's where... Are you watching on Tiger TV or anything? Uh, yes, I am. There's a double gap right around there at about 650 to 660, well, low 660s or so. And, uh, the, you know, a lot of times, they, especially when these gaps are, end up double or triple, we're actually at a double gap right now that goes back, uh, oh, I mean, it goes back huge. Uh, so it's going to, you know, now that we're back under that, uh, going to be fairly decent resistance here also. But that, uh, go back and look at that 228.12 uh, gap up. Uh, you had uh, 2.7 million shares into that. Um, we're uh, out of time here today. Maybe we'll I'll talk a little about it a little bit more tomorrow. But I'd love this thing to get back up into that higher gap before I pulled the trigger. And then I'd probably use options, too. I'll talk about that tomorrow. Thanks for the call, Mohammed. We'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs>